I'm John Giever from MedPage Today in Philadelphia for the American College of Rheumatology meeting. Colchicine was just approved by the FDA as a prophylactic treatment for gout. I spoke with Dr. Robert Turkeltaub of the VA Medical Center in San Diego. He led one of the key trials of colchicine for this indication. And I asked him what the point of doing clinical trials or bringing out a branded version of this product is at this point. Colchicine has been around for many years, and many clinicians probably felt like they knew how to use it in, in the clinic. Um, well, I think we learned a lot from doing clinical trials thus far with colchicine. And actually, um, there was only one very small randomized controlled trial in the past of colchicine versus placebo. And it was a, a dose regimen of colchicine where almost all patients got diarrhea by the time there was pain relief. A lot of the dosing recommendations for colchicine were uh, based in the PDR, uh, based on chapters uh, written by eminences rather than evidence-based. And uh, the idea of safely and effectively using uh, a drug with a fair amount of toxicity was, was pretty attractive. The AGREE study led by Dr. Turkeltub found that low doses of the drug were just as effective as the much higher traditional dosing with much lower GI toxicity. We also learned that uh, uh, the uh, maximum concentration in plasma was comparable with low dose and high dose uh, colchicine and uh, it was the total drug exposure that was greater uh, with the high dose regimen. So it's, it's very likely that um, a large amount of the side effects are due to the total drug exposure, GI side effects, whereas the therapeutic effectiveness uh, is nailed by reaching uh, a comparable uh, C-max level in plasma. So we, I think that, that constitutes a fair amount of, of new knowledge on colchicine. Dr. Turkeltaub said there were still some unanswered questions about colchicine. It's still not clear about the comparisons between colchicine, NSAIDs, and corticosteroids given systemically. For example, there hasn't been a direct trial to compare these. And uh, people haven't looked at, uh, in a controlled way, at how to continue the colchicine after you give this regimen of 1.2 milligrams, then 0.6 milligrams one hour later for the early gout flare. Uh, those are some of the things uh, that we need to learn. Uh, we've learned a lot about drug-drug interactions in recent clinical studies uh, with colchicine and other drugs, but not all, not all the drugs have been tested. And it's, it's clear now that uh, deltaism and verapamil have significant drug drug interactions. Uh, we knew before about clarithromycin and cyclosporin and ketoconazole, for example, uh, but now there's more specific dosing recommendations for prophylaxis of colchicine based on those studies. In Philadelphia, I'm John Giever from MedPage Today.